In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how you can convert your second gen Ram to have a third gen rear axle that gives you disc brakes. So this will give you a disc brake conversion to replace your drum brakes with disc brakes from a third gen Ram 1500. So let's get started. Okay, so we've got the truck up in the air and we are gonna go over the axle swap stuff. So just took a few quick measurements and it'll work. But we're gonna have to remove and re-weld both our shock perches and our leaf perches. So if you look here, we've got right here from that outside to here, four and five eighths. It's the same distance on both sides. And same on this side, four and five eighths to the edge of that bracket. And then when you look over here from our housing to our perches, it is exactly one foot to the edge. So you'll see there, one foot to the edge. And then we got the exact same on this side. If we go to the edge of our perch to here, it's exactly one foot to our pumpkin. And then if we go over to our third gen axle, totally different. So you can see here, we are well over a foot. So 14 and a half on both sides. So that's not gonna work, 14 and a half. And then to our perches for our, there we go, it's about six, just over six and three sixteenths pretty much. So not that it really matters, but it is different. So, and then same deal here. So they're symmetrical on both sides, but either way, in order to get this done, what we're gonna have to do is I'm gonna start taking off these here. It looks like we can reuse these which is a nice part. We don't have to hack up the other axle because they are a similar perch, but either way, I'm gonna start grinding, plasma cutting, all that good stuff, and uh, we'll get these off, and then uh, we can work on starting to get this in. All right, so I've moved the axle over here away from everything because I'm going to start making a mess. I'm gonna use the angle grinder. I could use the plasma, but you're gonna have to be extremely careful where you would cut, so any wrong angle and uh, you would be into the axle tube. The other reason is I also don't want to obliterate this bracket so I can reuse it. So there's just two welds on each side by the looks of it and then hopefully I can break it free. So let's start working on these two and then uh, we can move on to the other ones. As far as the angle here, um, I went from this flat spot to here and it looks like it's about 14 degrees. So 14 degrees down on these compared to that. So looks about the same on both sides but if you're wondering as far as the pitch it's about a 14 degree angle on this but we are going to be doing an axle flip so we're actually going to be putting this on the bottom and then now uh, we can give ourselves the 14 degrees or if we want to put our own angle on this as far as what angle our pinion is going to be on then uh, now would be the time to do it so anyways let's get to grinding and see what we can come up with okay so many hours later of cutting grinding and then uh, I even wanted to weld up some of the spots where they got a little bit low in my opinion. So welded everything, ground everything, and everything is looking good, boys. So all the brackets are off. Now it's just a matter of figuring out where we wanna put this. So it's getting uh, a little late today, so it's gonna be a wrap up for the day, but not for the video. And I'm going to drop this. So I'm gonna end up disconnecting our brake line. Maybe I'll order one of those uh, things that can pinch the brake line. I don't know if this one will even pinch. It probably won't even bounce back if I do, but uh, probably just end up draining it actually. But I'm gonna drop the axle. You can see it's on the bottom and we're gonna do an axle flip. So I'm gonna put the axle on top and these brackets I'm gonna weld on the bottom so that it can sit there. So, so that is the game plan. So let's get to it. Okay, so the axle is out and now comes the fun part of getting the new one in there and figuring out where all these brackets are going to lay. So we've got the axle in here, you guys. I ended up uh, flipping both leaf springs down, as you saw there. 
So for some reason I thought it would be a little bit harder because uh, I thought I had to get a ratchet back here, but you can actually get a wrench right straight in here and get to that nut. So anyways, she's in. What I did was I took the brackets that we cut off. I put them here and they locate on these uh, bolts here, our leaf spring bolts, and they center up there. And then we essentially just flipped the actual bracket. So you can see we took them off over here and then they're over here since we went with a third gen. If you're going to do an axle flip on second gen stuff, then uh, it would be in the same spot except on the bottom. But I did see that they sell axle flip kits. But, uh, this is just the way I'm doing it. So what I ended up doing is I measured from here. So this casting piece to here, we're one foot. This is the measurements on our second gen. And from this casting to here, it's one foot, 12 inches exactly. And that gives us our center here so that's all good and then the other thing i'm going to do i took a reference point so from the flat portion here i use one of these digital angle finders and if you guys remember so on the bottom from here we'll zero it out again so we'll zero it out again so zero and then if you guys remember if i go to the top here so we can see what our pinion angle is we're pretty much 14 degrees so I am going to be changing the transmission on this and you can also put in axle shims and stuff like that so you can get the right pinion angle but since I'm going to be changing the transmission and I have a perfect opportunity I do want to see what this thing is going to sit like fully loaded up so for now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a couple tack welds but the factory measurement when we did the same thing when we went from here to here it was on a 14 degree angle so if you guys want to copy the original ones, but I'm going to use it so that I can dial in my pinion angle once we put in uh, the other transmission. So I'm just going to put a couple tacks on each one just to hold it for now. And then we can put on our U-bolts and that part will be done. All right. So this is why sometimes, at least sometimes, you don't throw things out. So these are from a Dodge Dakota. Oh, oh point of the wrong area. From a Dodge Dakota. So Dodge Dakota has a factory axle flip. So the axle rides on top of the leaf springs. So these are the factory hardware. So go and get that from a junkyard because you're going to need it. Because if you look at these ones, it's not going to work. Well, I guess technically I shouldn't say that. It could work, but you're going to have your bolts up top. So because you would have to technically go like this because you see how this they're square. So you would have to go up and then tighten the bolts from the top down. So. This is a better setup though, you guys. It all fits, everything works beautifully. So let me go ahead, I'm gonna throw the other one on here so you can see the difference in the hardware. So the square U-bolts versus round U-bolts and then the plate here. So let me go ahead and throw this on. All right, so we've got our axle in place now and everything is good. Now we need to figure out for our shock mounts. So the distance is four inches and five eighths to the edge of the bracket. So I've marked that line there. You can see where our shock mount was before. It was over here, right here. My mark four inches and five eighths from our cast housing. Same thing, four inches and five eighths. And I made my mark right there. And then as far as trying to figure out what angle to put these things on, you could do custom, but I did the same principle again. So I zeroed out here. So you can see here, I'm gonna zero out here on the carrier. It doesn't matter what angle this is on. It's all relative. So once I zero out on here, then I go down here, this is 70 degrees. So I don't know if you guys can see that. So it is pretty much 70 degrees. And then if you do the same thing, you go on this side, this one I think was 93. Yeah, so this one's 93 degrees. So passenger 93 from there, this one is 70 degrees. So. Let's go ahead, go over there with our measurements and our angles. Let's get her dialed in. All right, so I just went ahead and tacked everything in place. You guys don't have to watch me weld everything up solid. Plus I still got to do some cleanup with a wire wheel over here to get rid of some of this paint before I can weld it. But she's in place, so that one's good. Again, this one was 70, this one was 93 for whatever reason. And yeah, there you go, just like stock. So once I weld those in solid, I just kind of tack them in a few spots for now. Um, the other thing too is depending on what you end up doing or what your setup is You'll notice this flange is a different style flange. So it's a four bolt flange On the third gen and then on the other stuff at least on mine It uh, is one of these styles. So 
you can swap them so zip it off i could go into a whole video you guys on you know do's and don'ts of doing this and having the correct preload on everything so go search that up if you guys uh decide to swap this out because this could be a whole video in itself and i know a bunch of people that know about rear ends are probably uh agreeing and nodding their heads as well so i'm gonna swap this over just uh to show you that you can swap it we will be changing the gears we'll be putting this 392 into there eventually but that time is not now but i'm just going to swap over the flange just for now just so i can move the vehicle around and uh, all this is going to get reconfigured later anyway so let me swap it over we'll zip that nut off take off that flange and put the other one on all right so everything is in one thing i wanted to point out well a couple things actually so the brake line does screw in that one actually at least on mine i've seen somebody say that they had to change the fitting but on mine that screwed right into the factory connection the hard line on the uh, frame rail there so that was good and then other things so i got my drive shaft reconnected there but again this is just temporary because uh, this transmission is going to be coming out so be reconfiguring all that doing a re-gear all that stuff other notable thing is right here so these studs they're actually larger than the original second gen stuff so when you go to attempt to put on your lug nut you're gonna notice that this is a much smaller diameter so it doesn't go on so it's a couple things you could technically just use the larger lug nuts on the rear and then use the original ones on the front or we could knock out the front studs drill them out and put in bigger studs on the front which would probably be the better idea but at least for now know that you need bigger studs so that uh you can hang the wheel so there you go there's that okay and as far as other stuff obviously i'm sure you guys can figure out as far as bleeding the brakes and getting that all hooked up i am missing a line a hard line that goes from the t over here to this caliper also i gotta pick up a couple caliper bolts as well so i can get that on there and then i can get everything snugged up and good to go so let's recap real quick what you need so you don't necessarily have to do an axle flip if you're doing the conversion the distances that we measured in this video are going to be the same but your axle would just be on the bottom and you wouldn't have to get these different u-bolts if you weren't doing an axle flip so really just depends how you want to go about it you guys if you're doing the axle flip you need the u-bolts and you're going to put your perches on the bottom if you're not then you're going to do it on the top but either way same goal and uh i would put this on the ground for you guys to show you guys how low it's going to be but i have to get lug nuts because i don't have the right size lug nuts right now so can't even do that just yet but if you guys want to see how it looks after the axle flip with the axle then definitely hit the subscribe button because uh, we'll be posting it on this channel shortly so in order to get this done you're going to need some skills or somebody with some skills to do some cutting some grinding some welding and you're going to need those u-bolts from a dodge dakota you could probably find them in other places but the ones that i found were from a dodge dakota so that we could do the axle flip and have the round style u-bolt with the proper i guess seat on the bottom here you're gonna need that of course you're gonna need to get a nine and a quarter rear axle so this one's out of a third gen so 2002 pretty much up to 2008 i don't know if there's any differences in there i believe this one's from a 05 so but either way you're gonna end up having to cut all the brackets off but the nice thing is like you guys saw you can reuse the brackets but you just have to put them in different positions so there we go with that you're gonna need some new lug nuts for sure so you're gonna need some new lug nuts whether you decide to match the front is up to you also, I saw some different opinions on the sensor. So the sensor right here, I was able to actually plug it right in and it plugged right in and clicked in on the one that was on the newer third gen axle. So um, either way, if yours doesn't plug in, you can actually swap over the sensor. So it's just one bolt and it pops out and you can swap that over. So I hope you guys found this helpful and informative. If you did, give it a thumbs up for me. A lot of work goes into doing these videos. So make sure you smash that thumbs up. It's free and it helps the channel. So any questions, ask down below. If you guys are interested in any of this stuff, whether it's any of the stuff on the second gen Ram, Hellcat Swap Dakota, Hellcat Swap Ram, check out the other videos. We've got a lot on this channel, you guys. So thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. See you on the next video.